Okay, thanks everybody for coming to the Kafka and Couchbase session. We're talking about scalable data streaming today. So who here is already a Kafka user? Uh, who here is a Couchbase user? There's a little bit of overlap between the two groups, but uh, thanks for coming. We have a, a good session. Uh, David Tucker here will be speaking from the Confluent and talk about how we integrate with uh, their platform. And I just want to give a very short overview of my, uh, in a nutshell, view of the big data kind of uh, environment and what's kind of led us to implementing uh, Spark and Kafka connectors for Couchbase. So if you didn't know they existed, they exist and uh, a lot of people are using them. Some are using them as a kind of a poor man's XDCR as well. So some of the questions about in the last session around filtering and more advanced functions like that, you can actually use Kafka to do a lot of that, that work as well. Um, I like to view the version one of big data environment as an ingest and archive kind of problem. We have all this stuff coming in from the cloud there. That's supposed to be, you know, Twitter or whatever. Everything is producing data. It's going into our database, into HDFS or into Hadoop, whatever, uh, and to be archived. And it was kind of the big data lake problem, right? Let's just throw it all in there. And then people realized, okay, we actually need to analyze this data to get any value out of it. So I call that V2 is collate and analyze the information. And so, you see, uh, uh, it's really kind of a one-way street in a way. Your application's out here generating stuff. Stuff gets thrown away into the into the data lake. Then it gets analyzed, and some summary reports are made, or some other third third kind of third-party tools used to analyze it. And then I'd say version three is more of the streaming and remixing. So kind of it's pulled out, analyzed, remixed, and streamed back into some data set or data store somewhere. And really what we're talking about now, and this was really really the, the whole point of uh, part of the keynote there, talking about the engagement side, is that the data comes full circle. It gets analyzed, gets streamed back, and engages the client application at some end of the pipeline. And obviously uh, Couchbase fits in here in a couple different places. Uh, we can be the store, we can be the analytical um, kind of um, middle, middle layer that then talks back out to the client. I'm talking fast and shaking is because I'm freezing cold. And we were a little over in the last session, so I want to give David lots of time here. The um, other view, when we talk about um, the big data landscape, we also talk about how does Couchbase integrate with the existing uh, data processing platforms. And that's kind of, I'm throwing around terms rather loosely here, saying a data processing platform really in modern, in our modern scenarios means that, that hub that allows us to talk to all the different kinds of data sources we need or services that we need to talk to. And really we, when we talk about streaming, we're talking about Couchbase being kind of connected to that processing platform. And in particular, I should go back one slide here. So. In particular, when we talk about Spark and Kafka being kind of that hub for us, the, um, the points to point out here are that they're both, they are both also distributed in high throughput environments just like Couchbase is. So there's a lot of parallels in terms of how our architecture kind of overlaps with the streaming architectures that are available. And we'll get more into that in some later slides. And just to talk briefly about Kafka, we have both the source and sync sides of the equation implemented. So for those of you that haven't used, say, Connect, uh, <laughs> Kafka Connect before, um, you, and you've only used kind of maybe you wrote your own consumers and producers kind of at a lower level, um, you want to amp up now and get into Kafka Connect if you haven't already. Um, and you, well, you'll learn more about that in a bit too, I think. Um, and uh, it's worth pointing out that our connector works with Apache, kind of raw Apache Kafka, as well as Confluence specific platform. David's going to talk uh, from the Confluence specific angle. I apologize, I think I set up the wrong deck for you. I merged our two That's decks, and we'll uh, get, get that back. At, yeah, I, no, I get, get back, and I've got to get to the right uh, presentation for a second. Where did my mouse go? Apologies, folks. There we go. And 
start from this slide again so we know what's, uh, what's going on. So going briefly over what Tyler was just talking about in terms of Couchbase and big data, right? You've got this in the center of the universe that becomes a, a stream data platform. And we're going to talk about that in, in more details here, right? Couchbase, lots of other data systems, Kafka at a core level and some components that Confluent delivers as additions to that become part of the way your business takes advantage of all its data. Not just the stuff that's sitting in particular data stores, but the events that are streaming from operational systems, that are streaming from your web servers, that are streaming from anything that generates data in your uh, in your enterprise, mobile applications, the whole the whole nine yards. And so that's where we get up with, with this kind of picture. And it was kind of funny when I saw Tyler's slide um, not too long ago and then looked at this. This was the first slide in my deck. And I don't think he'd seen my deck um, very, very much either. And so this is the way Confluence sees the world, right? If you think about what's gone on in the last 30 years of enterprise data systems, there's been an awful lot of work around what it takes to store data, to process that store data very efficiently. Couchbase is a perfect example of this. Things that relational systems simply couldn't do, you can now do with that experiential database model, right? That's really important. But there hasn't been nearly as much effort put into moving data from point A to point B, right? And the folks at LinkedIn ran headfirst into this seven years ago when they started trying to integrate a lot of their systems. They developed Apache Kafka as the next generation of streaming systems. And it does more than just allow publish and subscription to individual streams of data, right? We've had systems like that for a long time. Some of them scaled well, some of them not so well. But there's additional pieces that comprise that streaming platform and that let you do take more advantage of the data in your environment. And so for us at Confluent, I think for the community in general, there's a broader definition of what a streaming platform is. It's not just that ability to publish and subscribe data, though that's really important. And you want to have the ability for consumers of that data to join at any time, right? Think back to the old school pub sub systems where if a client wasn't sitting there waiting for the message, he'd never see it. And that simply doesn't work in the modern enterprise, right? You've got too many people coming and going in your enterprise streaming platform to be able to tolerate this. So you've got to have a storage layer, some kind of persistence, so that clients can come and go, and that producers are not coupled to the consumers seeing their data, right? If I'm a producer and I say, here's a week's worth of data, here's a second's worth of data, whatever that is, and I get an acknowledgement from my streaming platform, I should be confident that, darn it, that data is there, a consumer who comes by at any point can see it, right? That's, that's really important. But the last piece there is processing those streams of data, right? Analyzing, correlating events in real time, correlating them multiple streams of data, perhaps doing lightweight transformations, those kinds of things, it becomes really important to do at the speed that the data is flowing through your enterprise. You can't always afford to land it, do a batch report at the end of the day, and assume that that's going to give you the most value for the data, right? And so given that, you end up with something that looks like this. And ironically, this looks a heck of a lot like Mellon Austin's slide from the last presentation, right? If you think about what you can get in a modern enterprise is ingest and processing of data in multiple data centers, cross-loading across the systems. And you do that maybe with the specific tools. Like Couchbase happens to have a very powerful replication system, Couchbase to Couchbase. Right? But imagine a more complex system where your streaming platform is actually integrating lots of different data systems. Right? It's integrating a relational system from your old Oracle. God help you, it's integrating your mainframe system because you're doing change data capture out of your mainframe. But again, into Apache Kafka, Confluent platform as a messaging layer, and you're landing those events to someplace else because you don't want to pay MIPS prices on the mainframe for doing some analytics and reporting against those things. Right? you can replicate from one streaming platform to another, and then at the other end, land it into whatever data system you want, right? So that's the vision that Confluent has for what your streaming platform looks like, right? Keep the integration points between your systems as flexible as possible. Don't do point to point with everything. Do a streaming platform in the center, have each of your data systems understand really cleanly how to get data on and off of that platform. So if I wanna move my data from mainframe into couch, Great, I need one mechanism at each end, right? Couch, by knowing how to 
communicating with Kafka via the Couchbase connector, and we'll talk about that in a minute, I can get it there. I can get data just as easily from Oracle into Couch. I can get data from Couch into a stream processing layer to do it. And Couch doesn't have to reinvent itself every time, right? I'm not rewriting point-to-point -point integrations. Every time I need to do this, I have that availability with Kafka, right? And so what Confluent is, how many of you had heard of Confluent before you came to the conference this, this week? That's good. I like to see at least you know, 20, 30 percent of people who've heard of it, right? So we're the folks that built Kafka at LinkedIn, spun off now about three years ago. Um, we're by now, by definition, sort of a more mid-sized startup. We're more than 100 bodies uh, based out of Palo Alto. And what we build on top of Apache Kafka is a set of tools and services that we've learned from our experience makes Kafka easier to use in the enterprise, right? Lots, like lots of Apache projects, it's really easy for developers to go to Apache, run git build, and you know, check out the GitHub for Apache Kafka, build it, and start running it. But if you're a business, you want a little bit more than that. So we start with Apache Kafka at the core of the offering, and then add some open source components that we learned were really important to enterprises to build out more of that streaming platform. And so we have client-side libraries to, so you can develop applications that aren't just Java and Scala. You want a C library, Go, Python, those kinds of things. We have the connectors. I'll talk more about that. But the model there is building data pipelines, right? Your streaming data platform, it's obviously pretty important to get data on and off of the streams. But you don't have to write clients every single time, right? It'd be nice if you had a model where, hey, I specify configuration for here's my couch base endpoint, here's the bucket I want it to go to, boom, land the data in, right? And that's what the connectors allow you to do. And so they allow you to build pipelines from one data system to another with no coding, right? And because of the way the Kafka Connect API is structured, I can actually do filtering, I can do lightweight transformations as the data is flowing across, again, without writing any new code, right? Um, and lastly, we have sort of this data compatibility piece. If you think about an enterprise with more than three people, you often have the situation where the producers, the folks pushing data onto the streaming platform, may not immediately talk to the folks that are consuming it later on. So what we have is a what we call a schema registry that allows you to maintain syntactic information about the data as it's streaming through, and that makes it easier for the publisher to say, hey, I promise that my data is going to have first name, last name, customer ID, date, and it's going to be these data types, string, string, int, timestamp. And the guy at the other end can look at a record coming across and know that that's what I'm expecting and can decode it, deserialize it properly, right? Because at the lowest level, Kafka is just pushing bytes around. If you don't have that level of compatibility guarantees built into the platform, it becomes a mess very quickly. You have much more difficult to maintain the, the environment properly and to let your customers and users get the most out of that data. The last piece we, we put, and this is where Confluent takes its special expertise around, around Kafka and, and the other systems, is we have operational and management monitoring tools that are licensed software, right? And so if you've got a cluster that goes from 10 nodes to 20 nodes and you want to rebalance the data across that cluster, that's one of the enterprise class tools that we offer. We have multi-data center replication. Again, it's not a common kind of requirement for the developer, but for enterprises, it's one of the most common things that we requested for. And the traditional models that were available for multi-data center replication in Kafka weren't as reliable. I mean, we, we had folks, one well-known database company who shall remain nameless, who literally had more time, they spent more time and engineering effort on keeping their Kafka mirror maker functionality up and running than they spent keeping the clusters up and running, which is kind of ridiculous, right? Why should you have to spend that much effort on just the data center replication? Um, and then a tool that I'll show you a little bit later, our Confluent Control Center, that gives you sort of in-depth visibility into what's going on in the cluster, and that's, that's pretty helpful. So taking a step back, and so what you want to look at, I want to spend some time on the different components of a streaming platform, and in particular, how they relate to, to Couch and how you build things out with uh, Couch-based systems and get the most value out of everything. 
And so the first question when you start talking about that is sort of how do I get data into and out of the applications, right? And, and this is where the, the Kafka Connect model comes into play. And so I can always write applications, right? That's never, that, that, that's never a problem. It's just a matter of time and maintenance, right? So if you don't want to spend a lot of time writing the applications, what you can do with, with Kafka Connect is take the existing library of connectors that's out there. Confluent themselves distribute about a half a dozen that we build and, and fully support, but there's an ecosystem of our partners, Couchbase among them, that basically deliver the same thing. And so there, instead of having the, the two advantages here, one, to the end user, they don't have to write any code to get the functionality of integrating the data systems, right? That's the, the big win for the end user. But for the, the developer, right, it's actually, you're, if, if Couchbase is developing a connector, they spend less time on the mechanics of Kafka and keeping up with the next generation of features in Apache, in Apache Kafka 0.11 due out next, next week, I'm sorry, excuse me, ne uh, next summer, um, and other pieces, and instead just focus on their data system, right? So there's some abstraction that goes on that handles the high availability of the tasks, the individual consumer or producer tasks. It handles the mechanics of offset management so that when I publish, I'm guaranteed only, you know, single delivery, exactly once delivery, exactly once receipt of the messages. And the folks at uh, Couchbase only have to focus on the very low level details of getting the record of data finally into the couch bucket or taking that one bucket and formatting it up into a model that's appropriate for the stream platform, right? Makes everything a lot easier and it, it really does sort of solve the, the hard problems. You let the framework do the hard work of things. We're going to see the um, connector in my demonstration at the end in about 10 minutes and so the the nice thing about that, though, is again, you're not writing any code. You're building up a whole pipeline of uh, between one data system and another without writing code. And the pipelines can get pretty complex and powerful, right? Because it can, we have connectors for change data capture against traditional databases. We have connectors for stores like uh, Couchbase. We have connectors for Twitter and you know IRC chats and all sorts of other things. So it's kind of nice to build up uh, build up your applications that way. But you're right. File con file connectors, um, all sorts of things. This is just sort of a small subset of of what's out there. Um, and so, th look, think about the way in which your data has to move within your enterprise. Right? How many different data systems do you have? How many different places where that data could get used? Isn't it a nice idea to make sort of a very simple way of of building up those pipelines? Um, I I did want to sort of call out a, a new feature that's been around for the Confluent platform for about. Um, three or four months now. It's actually part of Apache Kafka core. This is all open source. So if I mention anything, if I show you anything that's, that's proprietary or licensed, I'll let you know. But all the stuff so far, this is all part of the Confluent open source platform. And it's this single message transforms. And so think about if I've got a data bucket in Couch and it has a record, a document record that has 37 fields. And what I want, I want to publish that into my, my streaming platform. And at the other end, I only care about five of those fields. Right? I only want to land five of those into a file or into an S3 bucket or something. Rather than having to, again, customize all of my connectors or write my own application to do it, I can have a single message transform that just filters out the five events or sends that event and forks it into two different topics depending upon the value of a different field. Right. So let's say I want to take all of the events from the West Coast and push them on the topic one and all of the events from the East Coast and push them on the topic two because that's where my data centers care about them, right? But that kind of flexibility is, is possible. Um, these last two, uh, the next two slides are sort of other ways of getting data into and out of your platform here. So think about the client-side libraries if you are a developer interested in writing lots of things, as I mentioned. Uh, Confluent includes a C library, a Python library, Go, C Sharp, actually a JMS uh, client uh, that is licensed software. So if you really want to do a tight integration into into JMS, you can you can do that. And then out in the open source community, there's another half dozen dozen languages that are that are fully supported. All kind of uh, cool features. And then the last way of getting data on and off that we like a lot is this REST proxy. So if you don't want to have any code experience whatsoever, but still want the logic of publish an event to a topic, consume an event from another topic kind of detail. The Confluent uh, open source has a REST proxy to do that. And then you do a REST interface. So literally any language that you want, you want to go back to your mainframe and use COBOL to send data to the streaming platform, you still can. 
Um, so kind of kind of a nice approach. Um, I want to spend a little bit before we go off into the the demonstration um, to talk about the streaming applications, right? Because remember what one of the criteria for a stream data platform is not just the publish and subscription of messages, but also the in-stream processing, because you really want to be able to, at the speed the events are coming in, potentially do some processing on them, right? If it, it's trigger an event, do some other kind of operation. And so what that looks like in the Kafka Streams API, right? One of the reasons that we built it out was because a lot of the scalability of Kafka is native to the way the brokers partition data, the way the topics are structured. And if you look at other stream processing frameworks, they are very powerful, but a lot of times they spend a lot of effort transforming Kafka's model of parallelism into their own model of parallelism, right? If I have to sort of offload all of that data into a separate cluster or a separate framework, I've lost the information I had from the Kafka layer about how the data was partitioned, right? Remember, I, my data stream, in most cases, is a set of key value pairs flowing through the system. Kafka is aware and has partitioned on those keys the same way that Couchbase sort of partitions. If you know that at a native level, you can do a better job of more efficiently processing, right? And so that's what Kafka Streams does. Um, you can actually build out all kinds of things with Kafka Streams applications. You can microservices architectures. Um, there's a, a feature called continuous query that I'll talk about in a moment that's pretty powerful. Um, but you can also do event triggered processing. So I can watch my stream and trigger some external event based on uh, what I see there. I can correlate multiple streams. So imagine I've got potentially my web logs coming in. I've got some operational database change data capture flowing through. And I want to keep track of, hey, did customer A change an order after they browsed something else, right? Think about how you'd have to do that in a traditional data store system. I'd have to wait until the data landed, gen some report up, God help me, land it all the way into Teradata before I did some analytics against this. With a real-time streaming application, I can actually, by tracking both of those streams as they're flowing through, keep enough information, enough state there to answer that question in real time rather than having to wait until uh, later on in a data, data system. So there are a couple of pictorial representations of this so we get a cleaner view of what's going on, right? Think about um, how you would traditionally do this, right? I capture some business events, I start putting them on my streaming platform, but I'm treating my streaming platform just as PubSub, right? So I have to offload to something else to process the events. And then I push them back, <laughs> right? Because they're going to someplace else, right? That's sort of the, the very traditional, very common model. And what, um, what, what happens with Kafka Streams is now I don't have to, I can pick an execution framework, whatever I like, right? So if I want Docker images doing the processing, if I want a Yarn app, whatever it is, because Kafka Streams is literally a pluggable Java library, but it's a Kafka consumer and producer. So it understands the mechanics of Kafka and so lets me get um, a much more efficient use of the, the streaming platform. And I can do two things from there, right? I can um, I can do actually more than two things, but the two basic operations are one, sort of write the results back to Kafka. I could arguably write them to other data systems if I really wanted to. We obviously recommend going back into Kafka and use Connect or something else for, for downloading into final data stores. But the other thing that can happen is I can do a, take an external application and talk directly to my Kafka Streams application and get an instantaneous view of the state of the application. So think of it as your Kafka Streams application is logically maintaining a materialized view of its state, right? So if I'm taking a stream of orders, for example, that application may be keeping a state saying, what are the last five orders by customer in this data stream, right? Continuous query, interactive query allows an interface directly in, and you can define whether that's a simple REST interface, you can make your own protocol if you really care. We, the examples we give are all just simple REST. But you can ask the application, what are the last five orders for this customer ID, right? And so now, instead of having to wait until the data lands, you can actually get real-time feedback on what the stream's application state is and, and all of its information. And the model here is not because we're trying to replace more powerful analytic systems. In fact, we would never recommend that you use Kafka streams for a machine learning, very complex, heavy weight kind of application, but rather, 
land the data where it can add value, where the processing something powerful like Couch is going to give you additional value. When you don't need to land it, don't. Keep a Kafka Streams application running, get some real-time event processing, query that application for its state, get useful information out of that. All right. So um, the demonstration that we have for this afternoon is actually a fairly straightforward one. So um, I use uh, Twitter, and I, I should give credit where credit is due, um, a solution architect from Couchbase, David Ostrowski, helped me out with this back in uh, September or uh, October of last year. So a lot of this code was built on uh, two versions ago of Confluent, so we've gotten a little bit of improvement there, but uh, very nice applications. We take a, uh, one connector that's looking at Twitter, a Twitter feed stream, right? Pulls in all the, the Twitter data into a given Kafka topic, we have a Kafka Streams application that does natural language processing for sentiment analysis on the tweet itself. It actually enhances that topic and puts it out to, enhances that record, puts it out to a different topic. So now I have two topics streaming through my platform. I've got tweets and I've got tweets.enriched. And then I've got a sync connector with uh, Couch talking and taking that, that tweets.enriched topic and, and landing it straight into, into Couchbase. Um, I could actually use Couchbase queries or anything else to, to track that. The reason that, um, two things that you might want to do here, right? One, the, the filter, the, the um, enrichment, right? Doing that net natural language processing, that's something completely outside the scope of normal applications, but it's just a Java library, right? So by writing my Kafka Streams application, I can just link in the Stanford natural language processing library, do some, some sentiment analysis, and, and do things. The other thing I can do, and this is, um, I actually do this with single message transforms, um, and it's very easy to do. It was very tough at the time we originally designed this demo, was I can actually um, take, they didn't filter the record. So it turns out that for 140 characters, a uh, Twitter event, when you do the low level API, has 128 separate fields. Kind of silly in my mind, but anyway, that's the, if you actually write a Twitter application, that's the stream that comes back to you. And you know, of those 128 separate fields, you may, only, you may really only care about a half dozen or so of them, right? So I only really care about um, the user ID, the actual tweet itself, um, some other things that are, that are going on here. So I was, this, this demo was built up when we were doing uh, football because it was fall here in the States, but of course football pulls in mostly references to American soccer, right? Because that's where in the worldwide event, uh, in, in the worldwide namespace, Football only means with that oblong thing here in the States. Um, and so this is sort of a pictorial representation of, of, of what's going on. And uh, we can s we'll see now as I, as I show off the screen from here. Actually, that's the, uh, that's the couch based thing sort of showing my, my 264,519 have arrived so far. Give it a second and more, more will we'll, uh, close in. But this is, and I apologize, with the resolution of the screen, we're going to have to sc scoot around a little bit so I, sh so I show this a little bit better. Um, this is the Confluent Control Center piece. So this is one of the, the chunks of licensed software around that gives you some visibility into the cluster itself, sort of how many brokers are running, what their overall health is, some, some details of the, uh, what's going on in the individual brokers, throughput, how much data is flowing through these brokers. Believe me, this looks a lot better in high resolution than it does for whatever uh, we're being abused, whatever resolution is the monitors supporting at this point. But the other nice nice feature about this is the the data streaming. So you sort of keep an eye, uh, keep a view on, yes. Well, that's not a good, that's not a good plan. Normally we'd be seeing some data flowing through here and I have a suspicion that uh, my spot instances have gone away, and that may be a problem. No, they're still flowing. So this is still flowing. So this data is still flowing here. I apologize. There must be something. Um, let me check this guy back, give him a quick refresh to push in. I, I, I have a feeling that we might be having a problem because of the resolution, that this guy doesn't, doesn't like it. So I'll keep the uh, computer at the back of the room when I'm done with the uh, presentation and I'm happy to show this off to people because it's clearly still still running but but what you'd see here and what you get visibility into is a little bit of what's going on in each of the topics and with the each of the events yeah I think that what the problem is 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 the resolution on the screen it's not whatever the Java is deciding that it won't it won't render 
from things. Um, let me try one. Let me try this. Um, come on, man. Alt. Still not happy. Because the fact that this is still going is a, is means that we've got, I've got things working right. He's he's actually still collecting data. It's just that he's not getting anything um, going on in here. So I'll I'll do a little bit of, of of work in here. So it's kind of nice because you can see, for example, we know that data is arriving into the the tweets here. That that topic we can actually drill down and see that there are two consumer groups listening on that. So the idea here with the control center is not to give you and to replace other kinds of operational tools you might be using to look at the physical hardware that you're deploying this stuff on, but rather to give you some visibility into the streaming platform itself, right? Things that, details about Kafka and the way that it's behaving um, that we want to be able to keep track of. We can also keep track of those, those connectors themselves. So you can actually see that there's a Twitter source connector running here and if I wanted to, to go in and change, for example, what my what field I was I was filtering on here. So my um, right now I'm doing I'm, I'm my my keyword that I'm looking for is football. I could go ahead and change that and, and, and update the, the topic here. Similarly, on my my sinks, this is I've got my couch base sink here so I can control those parameters. All I had to do to to connect to, to couch base was say, hey, read the tweets.enrich topic. We aren't doing any transformations on this one, but there's the host name of the Couchbase cluster. What bucket am I going to land it into? Some passwords or SSL components, right? So building up that platform is not writing any code. It's just putting all these things together. And don't worry, you don't have to type these things into this graphical user interface every time. It's a simple JSON interface into the Confluent platform so I can set all these parameters in a JSON doc and upload it as well. So whatever, whatever, makes, uh, whatever makes sense for your, for your operational side there. Um, I think I'm going to uh, stop there. We've got about five minutes left by the, the timeline. Take any questions that folks might have here in the audience and get it. Mm -hmm. yeah, so the, the question is, can you take advantage of some other operational platform, another management platform like Attunities or, or, or something else? So the, the majority of the information you see in, in here, certainly on the connector side and whatever, is actually REST calls into the other services. So you can sort of custom design something like that. We don't haven't done anything like that. We actually, Attunity is a good partner for ours because they love to push some of that mainframe stuff into Kafka as a, as a pathway for them. Um, and, and nor is this an attempt right now. We're not trying to, to do the equivalent of um, drag and drop data pipeline building, right? That's something that Attunity and other partners do a much better job of um, than, than we do. This is more to take a look at what y what's happening in your Confluent platform environment, not so much in the uh, those are the pieces. Yeah, yeah, so so the other question is like are there other there are other platforms that allow you to do similar things? There there, there are indeed. Um and so that's that's not that's not the only reason and and again, that's not the only thing we want to put into Confluent platform. It's not there's a GUI, GUI around that stuff, but Okay. So the question was a Couchbase database where data, documents are being mutated all day long and can he use the publication off to Confluent and the streaming platform to maintain sort of a, an accurate representation of what was the state of a document at any given point in time? Absolutely, right? That's one of the reasons that Kafka was developed as by Ed name was it is a source of truth for the underlying data stores because it is an immutable event log, right? If I publish something in Kafka, modulo my system settings for how long I retain the data, 
right? And I can set to retain the data infinitely, right? I can set compacted topics so that the last key for any given record is always saved until I run out of disk space, right? And so, yes, and we, we see people doing exactly that model. Other questions? So the question was, do we keep a CDC log and so you can connect it to analytics? Confluent, its data storage model is by definition, <laughs> you know, I change it. But, oh, but, and so the question, do, do we do CDC? Absolutely. So we have a number of partners that do CDC connectors directly. So actually, ironically, Oracle Golden Gate. You can take Oracle Golden Gate and publish their output directly to Kafka and then replay it any way you want. Debezium, um, folks have very nice CDC for MySQL and uh, Postgres stuff. The dbvisit folks who I like personally have the same model for Oracle and do a fantastic job with that. So if you want a CDC kind of behavior, then um, Kafka's a great story. Another question? What's the difference between Kafka and Kinesis? That's a longer answer than the 90 seconds I have left, but, the, but the, sh the short answer is the Kinesis model for retention is different. You don't have as much flexibility on things. The connector model in terms of how different things integrate in is, is subtly different for things. And the scalability is, from our experience, um, you know, not as not as powerful, right? I can't really spread things out quite as well. I don't have the flexibility of doing that like I do in a in a Kafka environment. Um, but there's uh, other things we can talk about offline if you're if you're really interested. All right, thank you guys all very much. Uh, enjoyed talking to you. Thank you.